Hello, my name is Bonnie Burke, and this webinar is all about applications. Online applications and paper applications. Applications hopefully will be opening up the door for you to a job interview. I want to share with you how you can earn a certificate by attending these workshops. If you attend five of them, you will earn a certificate titled Career Services Webinar. If you have attended five already, check with the resource specialist at the front desk and they will make sure that you get your certificate. I also have some handouts for you for this webinar. I have some notepads that you can take notes. I have some examples also of applications that we're going to go over as well. Two things I want to accomplish with this webinar. The first one is I want you to be able to create a personal data record. In fact, if you look at your handouts, you should have a copy of that in your handouts. The second thing is I want you to be able to accurately complete a paper and also an online application. More and more employers are doing online job applications. And for people who have minimal computer skills or are really uncomfortable doing that, I so encourage you to talk to them at the job centers. There may be help available, or else they may also be able to help you with a computer class and let you know what's being offered at some of the local technical colleges. Computer skills are so important in today's job market. Look at your handout titled Personal Data Record. I'm gonna bring mine up as well so we both can be looking at the same thing. The personal data record to me, I really feel is just one more, but yet a very important tool for your job search toolbox. You will need this information that goes on this record for most applications. However, I want, you to, tell you, I want to tell you to be very, very careful about the section that asks you for personal information. You do not need to fill that out. For an example, it will ask you about your driver's license number, or it's going to ask you about your social security number. Do not put that on this document. The world in which we live in today is kind of sad when people can steal our identity. So unless you absolutely have to write your social security number on something, do not. So on this personal data record, why I think this is such a valuable tool is that you will have a tool now that you can put in your purse if you're a woman or keep in the glove compartment of your car if you're a guy and on here you will be able to list all of your employers the dates that you started the dates that you left your job title a little bit description of your job your wages and your reason for leaving you probably don't have to put that down you're going to remember that piece However, having all of that information in one document is going to be so helpful when you go to apply for jobs. The educational piece on here also, job applications may ask you what was the address to your college? What's the city and the state and the zip codes? What years did you go to school? You only have to find this information one time when you put it on your personal data record instead of trying to come up with it for every single time you fill out an application. So it definitely is a time saver. Personal data record, definitely not a must have, but a tool that's going to benefit you when you're out job searching. So some of the things that I've been able to give you and present as handouts during the webinars, I really look at them as tools. Job searching is a job and you need the right tools in order to make that job easier. I'm gonna talk next about what information goes on that application and some tips on how to make that a standout, get that job interview application. Once again, my tip is pick up two applications. If these are paper applications, pick up two. One for practice, one for those left-handed writers, and one to make sure that it's polished and professional. Use a black pen. That's not a must have, but it does look more professional. And then also write neat. 
I have seen the average adult actually print on the applications versus using cursive. If your printing handwriting is neat and legible, by all means, print out the answers. Read the application carefully, and I've highlighted this word before completing it, before even filling in any of the blanks. Every application is different, and that also makes your job that much harder. So read the directions, understanding what exactly that employer is looking for. If you don't answer the questions correctly or completely, it may be looked at as a negative response, and that application may end up in the circular file. On that application, indicate the specific position you are applying for. Oftentimes, there's a line on the application that will say, which position? I have heard some people will write, instead of a specific job, they write the word open. Well, open is like this big black hole. If that employer has three job openings, they are not gonna take the time to sift through your application to find out which one of those jobs would be the best fit for you. So be specific, write the, the position you're applying for on that application. If you're interested in two positions, absolutely fine, just list them both. Be cautious on those applications when they ask you, why did you leave your last jobs? Oftentimes it's phrased reasons for leaving. If you left because your boss made you crazy, or if you left because you were terminated, or if you left for poor performance, all of those things are so hard to describe in a one inch square, or if you're lucky, maybe a two inch square. And so when in doubt, when they've asked for reason for leaving, you can write, we'll discuss. You might not have space to write, we'll discuss in interview. However, if you do, that's an option. Be cautious if you write terminated or dismissed or discharged. When I had lost my job, I was terminated. However, it was because of downsizing. So I chose not to use the word terminated, I used the word downsized. Absolutely fine, yet it's appropriate to write will discuss instead. Never write in your application the words see resume. Ugh, HR people hate that. <laughs> they only have so much time. They wanna see that information in that application. They don't wanna to have to refer back to your resume. So when they ask for your skills, they ask for your qualifications, write them. It's absolutely fine if you have them in both your resume and your application. Ensure your spelling and grammar are correct. When you do the paper application, remember there's no spell checker. The spell checker is you. Have somebody else proofread that application. For online applications, that's a whole different world. Sometimes those online applications have spell checkers, sometimes they don't. Do not rely on spell checker for online applications. Be very, very vigilant uh, about your spelling and your correct grammar. Another application tip that I want to talk about is do not ever leave a blank space blank. If they're asking you for specific information and it does not apply to you, do not be tempted to skip over that blank. You're thinking, hmm, well, it doesn't apply to me. You know, why would I put anything there? In that space, you can type or write not applicable or draw a line through it. Never leave a space blank. The employer will be guessing. Did they forget it? Did they, were they rushing? What's going on here? So write not applicable or draw a line through it. List your work experiences in reverse chronological order or your most recent first, unless the directions tell you otherwise. So make sure if you have that personal data record by you and you're filling out this application that you've put down your work experience in reverse chronological order. 
And once again, I know everyone is getting so tired of hearing me say this, but proofread, proofread, proofread. If you can get someone else to proof it for you, that's the best set of proofread. But if you cannot, walk away from that application, go to the bathroom, go get a drink of water, come back and read it out loud. Now I know that's a little uncomfortable to do in a library or a job center, but trust me, it is going to be worth the embarrassment to do it. A couple of other pieces that I want to talk about with job applications is how to avoid errors. One of the handouts that I have for you today is also from the Job Center of Wisconsin, and it's titled Avoid Application Errors. Some of the information on here I feel is a little dated. However, overall, this will be a must read as a follow up to today's webinar. A messy or an incomplete application will not make a good first impression. So keeping that in mind, after you fill out your application, especially those handwritten ones, if it looks messy at all, if at all possible, fill out another one. Did you know that on those applications, you do not need to include your social security number? If there's a section on that application that asks for it, you could write in that section, upon hire, or you could just put in the X's and your last four numbers. Once again, you want to be really careful about giving out your social security number. Oftentimes on applications, I have seen a section that asks if you've had any arrest or convictions. By law, an employer can only use that against job applications if they have had a conviction that's directly related to that job. For an example, if you were applying for a job as a cashier, and if you had a conviction of theft, it's related. So they may be able to use that against you. However, I have seen a lot of employers within this past year take that section off their application. They feel if it's a part of their hiring process to do a background check, they will find out any convictions at that time. However, if you're filling out an application and it asks you about a conviction, be honest. With today's technology, they will be able to go on the website and find the information, so be honest. I have an activity that I want us to do together. And this, in your handout, you have a pretend pizza place application. So I would take a couple minutes and look for errors in this application, and we are gonna talk about these together. Pizza place application. What errors did you find? Well, either this is a really old application or he's got the year wrong. He's looking for a full-time position. Hmm, a full-time doing what? Do you, are you washing dishes? Do you want to serve? Are you a cook? So position applied for. Be specific for the position. Days and hours. Well, that's not too bad. Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. However, keep in mind, most pizza places generate the most business in the evenings and on the weekends. That might really be limiting yourself. They have put their entire social security number down there. I would not do that, personally. Did you find any misspelled words? How about with their last job? They worked at Quick Trip? Hmm, the last time I drove past Quick Trip, it was spelt with a K. Any other misspelled words? How about with this sentence? How did you learn about this position? Through a friend? Hmm, sorry guys, last time I threw my friend, I got in big trouble. 
<laughs> so wrong use of the word. It's spelled correct. Any other errors did you find or any other suggestions that you would do differently to improve this? When I look at it, this could be a person very young, maybe just still in high school. However, they've only listed one job. As an employer, if I could tell that that was a young person in high school, I would be okay with that. Yet, if something was indicating that this person was older, one job would raise some yellow flags to me, thinking either that person was in a hurry or something happened in their life that they've only worked for one employer. So in this section where it says employer, he, sh he or she should have filled out the name of the employer or drawn a line through it to represent that no, there was no other employer. Just quick trip. So the second page of this, take a look at where it asked you to list special skills in education. Great team leader and player, time dependable, fast learner, high school graduate. Yeah, so that's all pretty good. Not too bad. Would have been nice to have given a little bit more results. However, look at the word high school. That is two words, high school, not one word. Take a look at his personal references. As you notice, he didn't follow the directions very well because the employer is asking for personal references, but the ad says not relatives or former employers. Well, he put John Doe, relationship, mother, <laughs> and the phone number. <laughs> Yikes, the employer would be, can you read directions? <laughs> the other piece that I want you to look at is I certify that all statements made in this application are true and complete. There's no signature and no date. Big piece that's missing. So I hope by doing this fun activity uh, and pointing out this person's flaws, it's given you an opportunity to take a look in fine detail, read all the directions, do not make the same type of errors as this John Doe did in their pizza place application. I'm not quite sure he would have even gotten an interview with that application. Next, I want to talk about online applications. More and more employers are using online applications. The reason they're doing that is because they use a software, typically, I should say, they use a software called Applicant Tracking System, or ATS. So what that means is the ATS, i.e. a computer, is reading your application initially. A person doesn't even look at that application until the computer has scanned it and what they're looking for are your qualifications. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. On that online application, you will have to have an email address. In some of our other webinars, we've talked about the importance of having a work-related and a professional-sounding email address. Well, for online applications, that's a requirement to have an email address. Thoroughly, before you start filling out that online application, know what that job ad says. Look for those keywords, look for those qualifications, because that ATS, it's filtering your information based on your responses that describe what that job entails. I'm going to tell you a very sad but true story what happened to me. The very first time I had to fill out an online application, it was for, at that time, I thought it was my dream job. I was like, yes, my name is all over this job. I want this job. I have all the skills. I felt I had all the qualifications except for one point. They wanted somebody with all of the skills I felt I had. However, they also wanted someone with a background in sales. So I thought, hmm, on the application, I didn't note my very little experience in sales. 
I talked about that in great detail in my cover letter because I felt I needed to explain my minimal experience and what I would do to gain more sales experience. I didn't even get an interview, nor a call. I was so sad. I was like, <gasps> I thought for sure I would get an interview. My name was written all over that ad. So I called and I was like, can you please tell me what happened? I am so excited about this position. If this position opens up again, I want to reapply. What was missing? And they checked. They pulled up their ATS and they could tell that their ATS did not find my sales experience in the application. The ATS didn't check cover letters. And I'm like, oh, but wait, I do have some and this is what I can do. Can you just please physically look at it? Can a person please read my cover letter? The answer was no. The process was over. They already have contacted the people for the interviews and they said, please apply next time you see an opening. I was devastated. However, I think it was a great experience that I can share that story with everyone. That computer is looking for those keywords. If you have those skills or something relatively close and we call them transferable skills, Put that in your application. Make sure that that computer finds your skills. In addition to those online applications, do not use abbreviations only. Spell out the word in tire, and I'm going to give you some examples. If you are applying for a certified nursing assistant, do not just write CNA. Make sure that you write CNA and then behind it, Certified Nursing Assistant. That computer now may find that qualification twice. It may, if it was programmed to hit CNA, and then it would hit it again when it did Certified Nursing Assistant. So be very, very careful when using acronyms. Do not abbreviate, or if you do abbreviate, then spell it out. Triple check, once again, for errors in spelling. Those computers, if it finds a misspelled word, it's not going to be able to guess what you've just said. Also remember that most of those online applications are timed. You may only have 30 minutes to fill out this application. It sounds like a long time. However, when you get into the nitty gritty and uh, pulling all your information together, 30 minutes goes by very fast. So before you log in, making sure behind you or beside you, you have your resume. You have that personal data record that we mentioned earlier. You have your cover letter. You have your references. You have all of your information there by you so that you can refer to that when you're completing that online application. So you might also want to have your high school or your college transcripts, any diplomas, any certifications, and also any letters of recommendation they may ask you to download those documents so they can be reviewed by an HR person or a computer. So I'm going to bring up an example of an online application. And what I want to show you is how to upload your resume and cover letter to this online application. So I'm not going to take the time to fill out my name and address and phone number. But the one thing I do want to point out is notice the asterisk. If there is an asterisk on your online application, that information is required. You do not have to write in this example your middle name. However, if you feel there are many, and I'll just say Bonnie Burks, I may want to add my middle name in that section just to make sure if they're doing a background check or if they are Googling my name on the internet that they're going to find the correct Bonnie Burke. However, it is not required. So as you can see, the city is required. Email address, remember I said earlier, that's required. Look at on this application. None of the education background is a requirement. 
However, I still would encourage you to fill this out. Any schools that you have uh, completed or certifications that you've completed. Employment history, I am really surprised there's not an asterisk there. However, put down your employment history, your employer's name. So this is the part on that application where it's going to ask you to either copy and paste your resume or to upload it. Now this can be a little confusing the first time you do it. So I'm going to show you how and after that you might need a little practice and if you do just talk to them in the resource center. I'm sure someone could give you a hand. So on this application you see the word down here that says browse. So I'm going to tell the internet to browse or look for my resume. So my resume has came up. You can see my name is on there, my training position. So I'm going to click my name and I'm not going to say attach, which I wish it did. It's so confusing. The first time I did that, I'm like, okay, so where is the download button? Where is the attach? The next button you push is open. And when I'm opening that, you can see right down here that it has now downloaded or uploaded, I should say, my resume to this application. Upload versus download. To me, sorry for changing the words around, it's actually upload. In our last class when I talked about resumes, I talked about first saving that resume as a PDF or a rich text. In my demonstration, it looked a little confusing. It was just a Word document. However, keep in mind when you upload a resume, make sure your cover letter is on page one and your resume is on page two. In this case, I'm earnestly good. You could also go back and do a copy and paste, and I can show you how to do that as well. Highlighting everything, I'm right clicking my mouse, I'm saying copy. I'm going to go back to my application. I'm going to right click in this square and I'm going to paste. So with a couple of clicks, I have my resume in this online application. But notice what just happened. Since I did not save that as a PDF, and I'm so glad that this happened so that I could show you the difference, I just copied and pasted it as a regular Word document. Doing that, my formatting has changed. It is not the nice, crisp, easy to find information resume format. It has moved his address and phone number over there. It has moved my current year off to another line. Changing that information can be avoided by first saving that resume as a PDF or a rich text file. Once again, if you have questions and want some more hands-on demonstration or training on how to do that, just talk with them at the job center. But I showed you on what not to do by attaching it as a regular Word document. So if you have uploaded it, it will appear down here. If you've done a paste, you'll put it in the box. And after you are pleased with all of your information that it's correct, then you'll hit submit. And then all your information goes to that employer and chances are the computer is going to start scanning for your qualifications. So I hope that little demonstration was helpful and most people do usually learn better once you've gotten hands-on and can actually get to try to do that with some help. I kind of want to uh, change it up a little bit and make you smile. I found this really funny video on job applications. The young man in this video is applying for a job to Snapchat. He was tired of filling out all the applications and not getting responses. So he videotaped his qualifications, and I'll let you listen to his qualifications, and then think about, so did he get the job? 
Hey, what's going on, Snapchat? My name's Eli, and I saw you were hiring at Venice. Personally, I hate paper resumes. I don't think a piece of paper can encapsulate anybody. So I decided to make you a my story. I broke it down line for line of exactly what you were looking for in a person. Remember, these are your words. Snapchat, I know you guys are picky, but how's spinning a ball while riding a bike on the beach, taking a selfie? Is that rock star level? Huh? Tell me. I can't speak for you because I, I don't know what you've seen or where you've been, but I know me personally. I've never seen Laffy Taffy look that phenomenal in all my life. Yo, 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 hit me, bro, hit me, bro. Yo, man, I'm just, yo, I'm stabbing, B. I'm stabbing. It said you need a strong rider. This is an exercise I like to do. Eli, how much you think this onion weighs? 0.54. Great job. I don't know, I'm kind of feeling a documentary. What do you guys want to watch? Solve that problem. What am I going to watch? Solve that problem. Believe it or not, I'm a huge graph enthusiast, and this graph is actually a graph of my enthusiasm for graphs over time. You are flexible, but you are not as flexible as I am. <laughs> I'm also an ugly selfie expert. <laughs> You're killing me on that one. Hey, Snapchat, I just want to say thank you first and foremost. Uh, it's literally my favorite app on my phone. I moved from Pittsburgh to Santa Monica literally 10 days ago, and now I have friends to hoop with, I have a Russian yoga buddy, and Belinda from the grocery store is the best. What your app has done for me means a lot to me, and to be part of the team behind Snapchat would just literally be a dream come true. Right now I'm a class away from finishing my MBA, I have all the work experience you asked for. I played hoops in college at Ithaca and St. Thomas Aquinas, and three months ago I got into Mensa. Snapchat, I'm telling you, I'm the man for the job. You can contact me at that email over there. And anybody else watching, I'm probably going to start a YouTube channel. So if you vibe, subscribe. Peace and positivity, everybody. That's what it's all about. I'll catch you. So what do you think? Do you, you think they hired him? I need to be honest with you. I could not find the answer to that question. He was very creative. He really thought outside the box. I think he made them smile. I'm just not quite sure it was exactly what they were looking for, but very creative. I always told clients that I worked with, if what you're doing is not getting you an interview, look at those applications, look at your resume. If you're getting that interview and you're not getting that job offer, practice your interviewing skills, work with somebody, polish those interview questions, because if what you're doing isn't getting you that job offer, change it up, do something different. Well, that gentleman did something really different. One other additional online consideration that I want to talk briefly about is in today's world, many, many people have Facebook or Snapchat or Google Plus or Twitter or LinkedIn. There's so much social media that is available with a couple of clicks for any hiring manager. When you are looking for a job, verify if you have Facebook that your presence on Facebook is professional. I always say, would you be proud of your Facebook page and information if your grandmother looked at it? Is there anything on there that you would not want an employer to see? If so, delete it, get it off there. Most employers do check to see if they can find you on Facebook. It's very easy to do. It's also very easy to save our Facebook settings, the privacy settings. However, that does take time and that can be changed. So if you are in LinkedIn, if you are on Facebook, making sure that your social profile is professional and that you're proud of that image. Facebook can be used to help you with job search. I used to do Facebook and I would do a memo on there at least every couple of weeks 
does anybody know of a job opening and I would put down my skills. I would reach out to people, I would network with people on LinkedIn and on Facebook in search of job leads. It can be a powerful tool to help you or they can both be a powerful tool that might make an employer think, nope, not the right candidate for our company. So check out your social profile. I want to review quickly the information that we talked about with applications. I would like you to take a minute and just jot down one main point that was covered in this webinar that you will apply the next time you complete an online or a paper application. Is that main point ensuring that your online presence is professional? Is that main point that you will make sure that you ask for two paper applications so that if you make errors on one, you can have a second one to polish and look professional. So I hope you've gained at least one. To be honest, I hope it's more than one, but I'll take one. List one important point to remember when completing that online application. The one important point I hope that you learned from my story is making sure that all of your qualifications that apply to the job you're applying for, study that job ad, making sure that if you have those qualifications or if you have transferable skills, similar skills, you put those on that online application. Remember, a computer is looking at that information. Computers don't read in between the lines and chances are, they don't read the cover letter. People do. Why is this information important? I hope it's important to you in realizing more and more job openings are actually asking for online applications. It, today's world is so competitive. It is so time consuming for employers to go through paper applications, to go and look at people's resumes and cover letters. So the information that we submit to an employer, it has to be professional, it has to be neat, it has to be organized, it has to clearly display your qualifications, what you can do for that employer. Well, I hope that one main point that you've learned from today's webinar is gonna help you create a winning job application, which will result in a winning interview Thank you so much for attending this webinar on applications. I hope you've learned one great thing that's going to help you get that job that you're looking for. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again soon.